Hi, here is a uh, perspective drawing video on how I would approach drawing something like these shelves. And what I've done is basically taken this photograph, which uh, nothing too fancy, but just out there in the world, kind of fun kind of cool and I want to I want to understand some things about several things um, and to sort of help understand I did I've done a uh, slightly transparent version of the shelves and I have started um, identifying some things I'm going to want to identify. One of the things I like to say is uh, you can understand most of perspective if you can understand um, how a box would act in space. But before we understand a box, we need to understand the uh, individual planes. And before we understand the individual planes, we need to understand the uh, edges and the lines. And before we do that, we need to understand the points of those different lines, edges. So there's a lot going on, and it's a little bit confusing because I'm trying to th both think of the big picture, but I'm trying to think of the, the details that I need to get started. So, perspective drawing often, often gets down to being able to understand whatever it is you're drawing and how it either does directly or would sort of basically relate to a box. And when I say a box, I mean what an imaginary sort of outer box would be like that contained either the entire the object or, or much of several of the objects. Um, but just in general, I'm trying to make a point that if I can understand a box in one point perspective and the basics of how that box would the lines and everything would appear I have a much more sporting chance of kind of understanding how to draw something. And that's true for both human-made things and things in nature, organic sh shapes and structures and forms. So that's the basic idea. The importance of understanding what the outer box would be doing to help then figure out everything that's going on in here. So to do that, like I have mentioned here, I'm going to start thinking of some important points. And I'm going to start thinking about important planes and important edges and important stuff. <laughs> I think I ran out there. But what I'm going to think about is this bottom plane. and this top plane I'm not worried about the details of the how the width from here to here or but I'm just trying to sort of figure out the basics of the different points and how they would relate to each other so the points on this bottom plane I'm indicating the uh, closer points of what I think of as this close 
closest edge. And then these points, which I think of as the further edge of this bottom plane, I can connect those, join those. And in a similar fashion, I'm going to think about these closer points of the top plane, the further points of the top plane, and the lines or edges that connect those. So I want to keep reminding myself what it is I'm sort of looking at and drawing and just understand the basics really of what's going on and I, that's 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 helpful so I'm I am thinking okay there's this there's this line here this edge that goes from this point to this point that's closer to me than this edge but I do know that in reality this edge is the same length unless these guys are playing a trick on me I can pretty much assume <laughs> that in reality this is the same sort of edge as this one is it's just a little further back and it's a little oriented differently in how we're looking at it and similar up here that edge is this the same in reality the same um, length distance as that edge and that the same is true for every one of these edges but I don't want to get um, digress too much and the way um, that we can help sort of understand well, before I talk about that, that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sketch in kind of what I'm thinking about as far as the outer box a box that um, would contain the, this entire all these planes all these pieces of wood rectangular pieces of wood that are assembled in this fashion So this would be um, what I would think of as the outer edge of this imaginary box. And oftentimes, I mean, this, this, this edge will literally um, be its own plain piece of wood. If it was a bookshelf with stuff on the side or a house or a little building with walls on the side. But I'd be thinking of this as the, uh, the front of this box I'm thinking about. And I would be thinking about the inner box that is joined by these guys. The smaller, further away points. So at first I'm trying to look, just think of the big picture, looking at these sorts of things, because this is going to give me a sense of what all these other angled lines and etc. should be doing. And it won't be exact, and it won't be perfect, and um, these, are, these are guides, and we've still got to use our, our, our brains. Um, to find out how I would expect all these sort of connecting edges to behave, I'm going to um, use the, this concept of perspective of extending 
a line through a couple of significant points, in this case these guys, and extending those to understand just where it is I would expect that the uh, the photographer was standing how how where the photographer was when they were taking this photograph and that represents the uh, the eye level of the photographer and knowing that eye level tells us all sorts of things that are very important to understand. One thing I want to point out, as I said, the, the eye level and, and finding where that point is, you can tell this is not exact. It's not like I can make one clean line, extending uh, line from each of these points, and it ends up perfectly connecting and meeting up and that is because there's all sorts of imperfections in this as well as imperfections in me and my abilities so but all these ideas are going to help us help us hone in on the whole thing this this point right here this eye level which is is where the camera was basically looking how high the camera was up and how left to right the camera was is the same idea as our the, our point of view or our our view um, and our eye level how high our eyes are when we're looking at something and how centered they are when we're looking at something as well as just overall how the object is oriented to us and the eye level is often um, indicated by a horizontal line that is often referred to as the horizon, but I'd like to think of it more as sort of the, uh, the dividing line between what we are looking up at, in this case what the photographer was looking up at, what was above their eye level and what was below their eye level because depending on where that is things will behave in a predictable way which is why we learn perspective and in a similar fashion how they were aligned is the uh, point at which we can think of things being to the left or things being to the right. So those are some of the, the foundational things I'm thinking of when I'm even going to get started. So I think depending on how long this is going I will um, I will just get some of those basics down for what I'm just gonna have fun kind of drawing this set of shelves. So if I am setting this up, I would probably start with something like this. You may have heard me talk about um, my R7 LJ system but I try to think of when I'm thinking about proportions more and more instead of trying to take a pencil and, and move my hand all over the place and get really lousy measurements and really confused just trying to think of if that was a big um, lowercase r and if this was a big 7 and if from here to here was a big capital J and if there to there was a big capital L, what would those... Can I sort of replicate the proportions, use that to replicate the proportions 
relatively quickly and relatively accurately. And I'm not, as you can see, I'm not drawing the exact proportions of this the photograph. But I'm looking and I'm thinking, would that sort of be the J? It seems like it's close. That, um, I'll look back at this video and go, oh, whoa, James, you were a little bit off there, weren't you? Which may be what you're saying to yourself right now. But I'm going to go with that. And in a similar fashion, even though it's sort of hard to see right now, I'm going to think of this as a very wide and short number seven to try to get an idea for this connecting edge. I'm going to try to think of this as a very wide and very flat lowercase r. That to that is sort of a j. And I can see it's already sort of not perfect, but I'm just just blocking in, sketching in, getting the idea. I think of this. It might be easier to sort of see it on this as a lowercase r. And what what the sort of angles of that feel like. Seven. So this gets me off to a, uh, a start, and this is my sort of general big picture idea. I am going to pause now and come back with more, but that's a sort of a great first step in identifying the important points of what an outer box would be and just sketching some of those in to your drawing and using a system to sort of to help get somewhat accurate proportions so I'll pause and be back for more soon